Paul Ryan has said that uh, a number of times that he won't be the party's nominee. USA Today's headline was that Paul Ryan was ruling himself out of the race again. What will his role be in the race moving forward? Well, it will be a calmer one for the next couple, three months for sure, because Paul Ryan did everything he could to tamp down the speculation, some of which his actions and deeds had fed, which is to say Paul Ryan has this ambitious policy agenda that he's putting forward for the House of Republicans, House Republicans. I talked to him about this on the State of the Union today, and I said, you know, this agenda you're talking about was a conversation many months ago. Isn't it designed to sort of put House Republicans in a slightly different position if you have to run under a ticket that's led either by Donald Trump or Ted Cruz and Speaker Ryan acknowledged that was one of the purposes of this policy agenda he was putting forward. Other people have looked at that agenda and said, well, it sounds like a formative presidential campaign. Then last week, Paul Ryan put out a video that many people thought looked a little bit like a campaign video or the beginnings of what might become presidential campaign commercials. So it's not as if Paul Ryan hasn't done anything to stoke these fires of speculation that he could come in and be a compromised choice at a contested convention. In fact, he has. But he's decided now, strategically, to try to end all of that speculation and calm this process down, at least as far as he is concerned, and let this process play out. I will tell you this, though, Elaine, it doesn't mean that this entire subject of Paul Ryan or someone else coming into the convention and rescuing it from its contested inability to settle on a nomination is over. There are many Republican donors, some of the biggest institutional donors in the Republican Party, who are still either leery of Donald Trump, dissatisfied with Ted Cruz, uncertain about John Kasich, who would gladly, willingly accept Paul Ryan as a white knight compromise choice at a contested convention. So what I will say is take Paul Ryan at his words now. They're emphatic. They're declarative. There isn't very much wriggle room there. But at a contested convention, as histories of those contested conventions have proven over and over again, are unpredictable, fluid places where lots of things can happen and people can say, I don't want it, I don't want it, I don't want it, and then all of a sudden they say they do. Yeah. Uh, what about this, Major? <clears throat> as House Speaker Ryan will be chairman of the Republican convention, so what power would that position have in a contested convention? Well, historically, and I mean historically in the modern era of party conventions that are essentially elaborate, well-staged, pre-manufactured infomercials, it's only a ceremonial post, almost no visible role and certainly no statutory role at all. But when it's a contested convention and there are real fights either over the platform, credentialing of delegates, the organization of the convention, the underlying rules under which it will operate, all of those things are supervised and gaveled either in order or out of order or gaveled into effect by the chairman of the convention. And that puts Speaker Ryan at the very dead center of what could be a lot of argumentation over all the things I just described. And those fights sometimes are the preliminary fights that indicate relative strength of rival factions. You go back to the 76th convention, some of the fights that the Reagan and Ford forces had did not play themselves out on the floor as far as who had the most delegates. They were fights over platform planks and other items. And those preliminary fights indicate each other's relative strength and tell one side or another who might have the upper hand when it comes to deciding who the eventual nominee is. That's exactly what happened in 1976. It may play out again in 2016. Whatever happens, the chairman of the convention is at the very center, not only visually at the center of it, but he has all the power of the gavel, recognition, and declaring something in order, out of order, and ultimately decided. So Paul Ryan will be right in the middle of this, whether he wants to be or not. Major, I want to ask you specifically about Donald <clears throat> Trump. In the past few days, he's turned his attacks away from rivals and aimed them at the RNC. And in a new interview with The Hill, Trump said that RNC Chairman Reince Priebus, quote, should be ashamed of himself. Uh, is there a strategy to these kind of consistent attacks or, as Ted Cruz has put it, is he just whining here? Well, if there is a strategy, I would say it probably strikes me as this. What Donald Trump needs to do is continue to fire up his supporters in New York, Pennsylvania, Maryland, Connecticut, Delaware, Rhode Island. Those are all the states that are going to be voting in this month of April to say, look, I need your help. This is a real fight and primaries are important and I need to rack up big wins to get the delegates that are associated with those big wins. That's especially true in New York. 
So I think there is a kind of a signal he is sending to his supporters. Look, uh, everyone needs to batten down the hatches, rally around me, understand the forces we're up against, remember why you're supporting me, and get out and vote. But as to a strategic argument against the rules or their relative fairness, there doesn't seem to be much sense to that at all. These rules were established on November 1st of last year, fully and finally established for everyone to see, and they were being formulated in public, transparently, months before that. Donald Trump's been a candidate since June of last year. If his team were so inclined, and clearly it wasn't inclined, they could have looked at all these rules, applied various strategies to maximize the benefit for Donald Trump. They didn't. One candidate did, Cruz, and that's why in some of these skirmishes in the last couple of weeks, he's gained much more than he's lost. All right, Major Garrett in Washington for us. Major, thanks so much. Sure.